Robert, you're on mute. You would think after like a million of these that I would uh, finally realize that. But again, it's December 16th, um, 2021. Thank you so much for taking the time. Sorry, we are starting a little bit late. I had a little bit of uh, difficulties getting my uh, laptop up. Um, again, this is the Ward Trail Design Workshop. This is just a public information workshop. So any and all uh, questions that you may have uh, relative to the Ward Trail, this is not to be confused with Windermere Recreation Center. Um, I received a couple of text messages earlier today uh, thinking that this was for Windermere Recreation Center. So if you live in the manors, um, let me put your minds at ease. This has nothing to do with the Windermere Recreation Center uh, nor pickleball courts. So if you want to get off now, you will not be hurting my feelings and uh, you can enjoy the rest of your evening. Uh, today is specifically to talk about the Ward Trail design, which is the multimodal path slash pedestrian bridge from north um all the way to Windermere Elementary School. A couple things is that we'd like to get through the presentation, then we can go ahead and answer any questions that you may have. Um, Kimley Horn Associates is the lead engineer on this project. We do have John Fitzgibbon, the town's engineer, as well as public works director, Tanya Elliott Moron. Um, so again, we have um, as long as you need to answer any questions, especially if you are directly impacted by this project. Uh, but again, this is not the Windermere Recreation Center um, uh, workshop. Uh, that is something that has been kicked down the, the road for a little bit. So if and when that does come up for discussion, we'll make sure that you are noticed because I see Tom Haverkamp joined. So Tom, you can enjoy your night if you don't want to listen to this. A um, couple things on people always ask, how is this going to be funded? There's various um, avenues that this can be funded. Uh, one, there is the West Orange Healthcare Alliance that is providing money to West Orange County. Uh, through the MSTU, through the West Orange Healthcare Alliance. Um, and we are working as pretty much a mini MPO uh, to select projects, create a CIP, and then fund those. We are also working with uh, Val Deming's office. Uh, they have committed about $760,000 to this project. In addition to that, we are working with Geraldine Thompson um, in trying to uh, gain additional monies for uh, state appropriations for this project as well. Uh, we are at 60% design of this uh, trail, and we can get into the specifics of the width, what kind of materials can be uh, constructed of. Um, but this is not your last spot at the Apple for comments. We're going to come back at 90, and then we are going to be bringing this to town council twice for approval for us to proceed. Um, and again, uh, any and all comments are welcome, especially if you're directly impacted. Uh, with that said, I'll kick it over to Mike Woodward for Kimley Horn Associates. All right, thank you, Robert. So we'll go ahead and get this get this started. Um, you mentioned the limits. Here's a quick map showing from North Drive, which is just north of, of First Avenue, um, going on up to Park Avenue, which is where the elementary school is. It does include the canal bridge. We had some previous meetings related to the bridge. Um, total length is just just over half of a mile some future phases to talk about, all right? After this one, then the next phase would be to, con to, to continue it further south. So go from 1st Avenue down to 6th Avenue. That's the kind of uh, dark blue. Um, the next phase that we were looking at is actually a, a continuation east along 6th Avenue that would take it, take it over to the edge of the town limits um, near Apopka Vineland Road. Um, if another phase would be to continue south towards about the southern limits of the town um, from down to Chase Road and, and take that up to 6th Avenue. So once all those connections are in place, then the next step would be to look at a, a future connection that would have to partner with um, the county as well as the city of Ocoee that could take this potentially farther north and uh, eventually get you into West Orange Trail. So, but that's that's off into the future. It's a it's it's a little bit beyond what what we're looking at here internally. And, and today again, we're we're just focused on that stretch from North Drive up to Park Avenue. So the overall process, um, we started doing concept planning for this in year 2020. Prior to that, we had looked at the overall master plan for the area, and that's where we had looked at the, the total complete connections. Um, but the planning for this segment itself was, was about last year. Um, we selected the bridge options back in 2021, still um, earlier this year in January. Uh, that's when we picked the bridge type as well as the color. Uh, for the trail design, that's where we are now. 
we're talking about the 60% plans. Uh, we'll look at finalizing the design in the spring. Again, as Robert mentioned, we'll come back at 90%. Um, certainly easier to make changes now than it will be in the future. Um, for funding, uh, Robert mentioned several of the sources that are being pursued right now. It's, uh, it, it always helps get, to have somebody who's advocating for projects like this. Um, sometimes there are funds that are out there and the more we've done internally, that gives you access to additional funds. If we can take this to a certain level, then um, it makes it easier to, to get funded for construction. And of course, construction is the, uh, the highest dollar item for this. Um, and ultimately the timing of that, it's hard to say exactly when it'll happen. It depends on when, when money starts becoming available. All right, so what's it look like? In general, there's the old berm from the railroad. Um, we're looking to put a concrete path on top of that, generally 10 feet wide. Um, there's some sections near the railroad where, it, I'm sorry, near the bridge where it would get slightly wider, but in general, it's a 10 foot wide concrete path. Um, pretty much on the top of that berm. Every now and then we kind of bend it around to avoid trees so that we can keep those trees in place. Um, but that's what you see here. Um, it will, we will cause a uh, replacement of that existing pedestrian bridge. Right now it's pretty narrow. Um, the bridge that we're looking to complete it with is, is going to have a look similar to the one shown here, except the color will be black. Um, the total height at the top, is, uh, top the highest portion of the bridge is going to be eight feet tall. Uh, the width along the, or along the bridge is 14 feet wide. It's wide on the bridge so that golf carts can pass each other on the bridge. Um, the, rest of the, the rest of the path will not be as wide, and I'll tell, tell, talk to you a little bit later about some of the specific treatments to keep golf carts off the rest of the path. Um, the deck itself along the bridge is going to be brushed concrete. Um, an arborist, a, 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 an independent arborist, not affiliated with my company, the town hired them separately to, to have that independent perspective um, called Le Legacy Arborist. This is somebody the town works with quite a bit. They had recommendations. Um, most of the recommendations were for things like root pruning or protection. Uh, some of those recommendations were uh, specifically for porous paving or gravel base underneath the trail just to protect the roots. There were some additional recommendations for tree removal above and beyond what we had identified. And the reason for those tree removal was due to poor structure, uh, poor condition of the trees or invasive species. Um, the Arborist Report identified those specific trees in the location um, and, and made those recommendations for removal. Uh, they also recommended relocation of one of the connections to the golf cart path. So keep that in mind. I'll get to that as we get to that portion of the slide of the of the uh, design. So now we're going to take a look at these these design plans. I will slide them on over and then just kind of walk you through from south to north. Um, of course, starting right at at north. That's that's a little bit sounds a little funny, but um, starting at north and moving our way to the right along these plan sheets, that's traveling north. Um, so we'll start out with a 10 foot wide path. Um, we are able to build a, a little bit of a little bit more of a swale in this area so we can improve the water quality in the area. That swale is gonna be is gonna be pretty slight. It's not a very not gonna be super deep, but it will provide additional water quality. Um, again, we've called out certain areas. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here, so try not to get nauseous. Um, so again, we'll start out with that 10 foot wide trail. We have identified some areas for root protection. We'll cross check our plans from the Arborist Report to make sure that we're talking about all the same trees. As we continue farther north, again, we're staying generally on top of the berm. In some places we're going right through trees that will we are calling for removal of those trees. In other areas, um, we do try to move around them. So as you get almost to the north limits of Old Main, um, where it terminates, that's where we're going to have a ramp that goes to and from Old Main for golf carts. Um, and if you look just immediately south of that, we've got a few bollards shown here. So those will just be uh, like raised cylinders that will prevent golf carts from con continuing further south um, on the path. 
Now, golf carts are allowed on your neighborhood streets. So the, the point here is, or the, the intention here is to allow them to take Old Main as well as other neighborhood streets and then cross the bridge. Um, and then on the north side of the bridge, you'll see another treatment like this. Now, this, uh, this is a, a little bit challenging from a design perspective, just because you have different slopes in different directions and you've got the top of a berm, but then you want to go over that to meet a lower, lower profile of the existing road. So a um, little bit of a challenge, certainly not, not insurmountable, but just, just something that, that we had to uh, look into closely. Hey, Mike. Yeah. I'm not sure, um, but we're still at North Avenue, at least on the visual that I have. Uh oh so I'm not sure if uh, the slide moved. Robert, Tanya, do you guys see that? Are we still at okay. North Avenue? Let me try to let me <clears throat> remove yes. the sharing. Yes, we are. Yeah, we're still on North Avenue. So as you were talking about the transition yeah, none of it's, for golf none of carts, it's making yeah, sense. it's not showing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, let's, there let's you go. go. OK, Here way go. better. OK. All All right. Right. Versus paying attention. You know, sometimes <laughs> with the PowerPoint, it has an issue. Uh, that's why we typically go with PDF. but. Um, yeah, I just yeah. had to. Uh, so okay, we're back. Hopefully now, holler if it if I ever start talking about things. That yeah, I'm you might want to back up to um, where you started at North Avenue and talk about the transition with the golf carts. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, so well, initially this is just the ten foot wide concrete, so no golf carts here. We're calling out where the root protection will be. Um, again, we're going to cross check this with with Arbor's report to make sure that we're calling out all of the ones that they are recommending. And as as John Fitzgibbon mentioned earlier, uh, prior to recording, um, the town will go out and perform some of that root pruning um, on your own, so that you can be confident that that the the roots will have or the tree will have a chance to kind of grow back a little bit. Um, prior to the start of construction, and that will that will further protect a lot of your trees. All right, plan sheet number two. Again, we're moving from south to north. This is where I mentioned the bollards. Um, if you can see, the the bridge over the canal is right about here. Um, hopefully, you can see my little hand. But uh, south of the bridge is where we'll have bollards and this connection to Old Main. That was the one that I spent a lot of time talking about prior to giving you this picture. Um, another thing to point out on this plan sheet is this pond right here with some inlets and some connections. Uh, depending on whether a separate project on Old Main, whether that moves forward first or this trail project moves forward first, that will determine who's going to build this pond, because uh, both projects benefit from it. So um, that still is, is to be determined. Um, we're involved with both projects, working very closely with the town. So as we go farther along, we'll know. But at this point, we are reflecting both projects um, in the background of each, of each project so as to make sure we're coordinating and, and, and aware of the, the process for the other project. But we'll, we'll reestablish that swale and be able to provide additional water quality improvements here. Um, again, we mentioned the bridge itself that'll be, that'll be 14 foot wide. We've got 12 feet leading up to the bridge, then on the, on the bridge itself, 14 feet wide. And then on the other side of the bridge, we'll, we'll get back down to 12 feet again, 12 foot wide concrete. Again, we're calling out locations where we'll do the, the root protection and locations where we'll need to remove the trees. Once you get across, across the uh, canal, now you're into an area that's, that's still raised up high, but it's, it's pretty, pretty wild through there. There's a lot of trees, a lot of weeds. Um, it's not, not being used for a whole lot right now, but um, eventually the path will be up there and there'll be trees on both sides. So this will be a really nice shaded section for several hundred feet before you get towards the, the end of uh, where, the, where the trees kind of end right now and it's cleared out. Um, adjacent to Lake Butler Boulevard. Mike, which... real quick, sorry to interrupt. Um, yeah. Can everybody on um, the meeting here, Mike? I uh, just got one comment in the... Um... Yeah, we can hear. Yes, we can hear. Okay, thank you. It okay. just might be um, the one. So thanks, go ahead, proceed. Okay, so um, this is this is one of the trees that the the was mentioned in the Arborist report, okay? It said there's a longleaf pine here, and so... Uh, can we can we go back and try to avoid that longleaf pine? So we'll take another look at moving this location 
um, where golf carts are intended to, to move off of the sort of bridge section onto uh, South Lake Butler Boulevard. We'll take a look and see if there's a possibility to, to move that new connection. Um, because of the swale there, we do have a pipe going underneath that connection. Um, so we'll have to take a look at the grades as well as other other trees that we would want to want to miss. So um, again, we'll we'll go back and take a look at that and see if that's something that we can we can relocate. All right, moving further north. Um, as we get a few hundred feet up, and this is this is still about four or five hundred feet south of where Lake Butler Boulevard connects over to over to Main Street, you can see that's where we pick up some curvature in the in the profile of the road. Um, a lot of that curvature is to avoid impacting some of the trees in the area. Now, when you swing it out wide over here near Station 121, um, we do get a little bit higher. We're, we're getting off the berm, so there's some elevation changes to make here. So um, it's going to curve and it's going to go up and down a little bit. So uh, I think this will be a fun section to, to, to ride on. Uh, we've got trees on either side. This will be a pretty cool section. Um, and uh, the, the design speed we used here was, was about a, um, a 15 mile per hour design speed. So that's, that's fairly slow. Um, a lot of bicyclists could go faster than that if they wanted to, but by having a, a lower design speed, they, they, some of them will, some of them won't, but um, that, will, that lower design speed does allow us to avoid several of the trees in this area. Again, uh, once, we're, once we're past those portions where golf carts have to get off of the, the trail, we're going with 10 foot wide concrete. All right. So here's your connection to Lake Butler Boulevard. Um, there's an existing crosswalk there um, that kind of takes you to the, to the sidewalk. It's a little bit at a, at a strange ang angle that you don't typically see too often. So we'll just have a cross, crosswalk going straight across to the new trail. And then as you get north of, of the connection of Lake Butler Boulevard, there's an existing sidewalk there. And generally our plan for this wider trail is to go mostly on top of where that sidewalk was. You can see the sidewalk with the old sidewalk or existing sidewalk with these dashed lines. And we're not staying directly on the center line, right? We're sometimes we're going a little bit to the north, sometimes a little, I'm sorry, a little bit to the west, sometimes a little bit to the east, but generally in the location where that sidewalk is. That's gonna help with your constructability. It's gonna also help avoid impacts to other trees. Um, again, this is an area where we're able to construct a swale to provide additional water quality. Um, just because of uh, the existing topography out here, we're going to be able to do that on both sides of the road. So um, everything that we can do here to help with, with water quality is going gonna, is gonna to eventually help with your lakes. So that was a, that was a big benefit of, of doing this, this project was to not only provide the pedestrian connectivity, but also improve water quality for the lakes. All right, so continuing forward, as you, as I mentioned, we're sometimes we're we're a little bit west, sometimes we're a little bit east of the center line of the existing sidewalk. And the next plan sheet takes us up to the school. Um, this area here, where the sidewalk currently kind of weaves between between trees, we're able to to miss one of them, but not both. So um, just because it's going to be a little bit wider, we do have those those slightly higher design speeds for a trail than you would for a sidewalk. So this is a little bit smoother of a curve. Um, so we'll replace the, uh, the pipe that goes underneath that sidewalk to connect the swales on either side and smooth out that curve a little bit, not all the way, but, but somewhat. And that takes us up to the connection to Park Avenue where we, we are going to match existing sidewalk on park. Uh, we'll have we'll match the exist, run into the existing crosswalk with a typical end treatment and same thing for the crosswalk going across Main Street. So uh, this is the point where the 10 foot wide concrete trail, this phase at least ends and just transitions to the existing sidewalk that's there now. All right, now that we've walked through that, I am going to show you a little bit if you're curious how to read the bottom part of this plan set, which is a little bit less intuitive. Um, the, the dash line here is your existing ground. 
and then the solid line is your is the top of the new trail and wherever we are on the lower half of this sheet corresponds to the location of the plan view where you're looking at the aerial so if you're curious as to like what the elevation is doing by the bridge then we can go to the plan sheets here at the bridge which is right around station 109 plus 40 each one of these tick marks is 20 feet so 109 plus 40 let's see what the bridge looks like 109 right about here you can see here's the contours that's they go down into the water um, you can see we've got about a five percent slope on going up to the bridge now five percent is uh that's that's pretty much your standard for ADA constructability. So um, this will, you, you will be able to travel on this if you, uh, well, if this will meet ADA uh, criteria. Um, there's some portions that, some sh short portions that do have higher slopes. Um, that's just necessary to get up high enough uh, to, go, to go over the bridge. Um, some other, there's not too many other transitions that are really super interesting here. Generally, your, your profile goes up and over the bridge, but let's go back to that area I was talking about earlier where it curves around here. So I mentioned as we curve and we get closer to Main Street, we're getting off the berm. So that's going to have the effect of needing to uh, raise the existing ground at that point. So since we're off the berm, the ground that will be over is a little bit lower. So we'll have to raise it up just a little bit, uh, bring in some dirt to, to, to make it a little bit higher at that location. But again, these percentages here, those are the grades that are as you're going up and down on the trail. And that's pretty much all that we wanted to cover today. So, um, so I can Mike, keep the I, plan I know, sheets here. Yeah. I know I've had a lot of comments from residents. Um, you know, we have the pedestrian bridge, but we also have the uh, main bridge over the road. One of the things that we've done is tried to maintain the constricting bridge that's already over the road and Main Street. And we actually will improve boat traffic, right? Because it's not as low as a pedestrian bridge is right now. So the constraining factor is the bridge going over the road. The bridge, at, so if you're in a boat, and you're yeah. driving and you're riding in your boat underneath Main Street. Let's say you, you take out a yardstick or something, a measuring device. And let's say you've got eight feet of clearance from wherever you're measuring on your boat up to the, the, the lowest part of the bridge. You'll have exactly that amount of clearance underneath the pedestrian bridge. Yes, which is an improvement to what we have today because the T structure of the pedestrian bridge is less than what we have at the bridge. So mm -hmm. it's better today than it will be tomorrow. Yeah, thanks for pointing that yeah. out, John. All right, thanks Mike for your presentation again. Um, for those of you that joined us, this is for the Ward Trail from North to Windermere Elementary School. This has nothing to do with Windermere uh, Recreation Center or Pickleball. So if you joined for that reason, um, I'm sorry, um, but you can enjoy your night. Um, we are more than happy to take anybody's questions. We have posted the plans on the town website. We will be posting the Arbor's report as well. And as I put in the comment section or the chat section, um, we will be working with each and every property owner that is directly impacted, um, working with them on landscaping ideas, uh, mm -hmm. also working with uh, the landscape architecture um, um, person from Kimley Harness Associates, the tree board and also our arborist that uh, we utilize Eric Ware and we will post the uh, arborist report as well. Uh, so with that said, we can go ahead and take any all questions at this time. Teresa. Go ahead, Teresa, you can unmute. The uh, engineer mentioned a couple of things. Um, I do like the fact that they're trying to work a curvy, curvy linear design to avoid as any impacts to the trees. But he also talked about bringing grade in to raise the grade in several areas where they are off the berm. Um, when you're raising the grade over tree roots, you are suffocating those trees. You cannot raise mm -hmm. the, the existing grade over trees without suffocating and killing them. So 
you're going to have to pay strict attention to the drip lines of those trees and not cover any root zones with any raised grade or soil or dirt. So I'm curious to, as to how you're going to work around that. Um, what's the plan? Yeah, most of that's identified in the report, but if you want to get into um, the details, Mike, you can. Yeah, no, that's that's understood. Um, that you're you're right. Like if we do raise the grade and cover tree roots with two feet of soil, that would be that'd be terrible for the trees. Um, so as we as we curved around that area, let's get to it and be specific here. Um, so here we're trying to avoid several trees that are like sort of in the middle of the berm. And there weren't there weren't major trees towards the edge. So yeah, we will be higher, and it, as you uh, and we'll need to we'll need to have a, a steeper slope going towards Main Street. But there were no trees in this area that we were concerned about impacting. Um, so it was more of a like the design challenge here isn't so much a, like we already avoided trees. We were pushing away from them closer to Main Street where there were not trees. Um, we will have to be careful with the slope. Uh, adjacent adjacent to the path through here. And Teresa, that was part of our design in our walkthrough with Eric. I mean, yeah. we spent we spent an entire day with him walking the entire trail. And part of the Arborist report was for us to be able to give good information to Kimberly Horn to say that, hey, if we're going to move stuff off to the right or to the left and, you know, put to position ourselves around trees, we didn't want to cover the roots of the trees because we understand that. And so that was all taken into account as we are working with the arborists and also working with Mike in the design. And that's why we, you start to see a lot of the switching and the maneuvering and everything else was protecting as many trees as we can with um, covering up them with dirt and, and it's also the profiles and everything else. It's also why there's a low point here and even prior to getting to this point, prior to bringing the arborists in, involved, we did a walk through even to just set our initial center line. So this whole this whole path was was based on avoiding mm -hmm. impacts to trees. Yeah, the center line was actually evolved out of our meeting with the arborist to make yeah. sure we weren't doing what you're saying. John, and additionally, um, Eric Hoyer, when we met with him, put it as part of his scope that he would help us for a plan for stressed trees after the the path absolutely as well. he's on board through the whole project yeah mm -hmm. who, who is the isa consulting arborist eric, eric hoyer. hoyer okay and Teresa, you met him he's the uh, guy that's been working with me on the facilities for the last 12 months does that complete your questions Teresa? Um, so. i'm just concerned at, at how many trees will be taken out for this pathway. I think that was in the Arborist report as well, um, which I don't remember exactly how many it was. Um, I think Robert, you said that report was available on the website. Yeah, we'll make it available. Um, again, I did not hand. see that in the written report. Yeah, no problem. We, we received it uh, late last week and we'll be more than happy to post it on the website uh, tomorrow. And you can see how Eric did it too, was he identified every single tree that was going to be uh, impacted, not impacted, or we could do some uh, structural pruning. We can do some other stuff that would help protect uh, those trees. And you can see this is the report, right? Mike had it up. Yeah. But we'll get that to you. We'll post it. Okay. So we had shown 45 trees as being removed and then he identified an additional 36. Nope, sorry, sorry, that wasn't it. Let me get to it. That 46 included a various uh, amount of species. So again, how many trees will be coming out? I think Mike well, said. No, yeah, hold on. I, I think it's important for us not to look at the number of trees because a lot of them are trees that are, you know, campers invasive. and those kind of things and invasive, invasive. trees. And so, Teresa, just so you know, we spent a lot of time with Eric, you know, and making sure that we can adjust the path appropriately so we're not taking out heritage right. Let me amend my question. How many, how many 
oaks, how many live oaks are coming out? Okay. Well, I think it's probably better for maybe you and I, we can meet separately and look at the, look at the report. From yeah, every, yeah, because that report does list them by species. And so. there's a, and they're, they're, they are by species, but they're also um, a lot of stuff that we looked at generally throughout the corridor, you know, with some of the Duke energy stuff and everything else. And so I had the arborist look at how do we, you know, look at this holistically as well. Yeah, holistically. Um, Teresa, Sorry, we'll send you I had the report. to put that in there. Yeah, we'll send you the report and we'll also post it as well. Again, you know, it's very detailed on what species, the DBH, and then what, if any, issues uh, that any of those trees have. Um, again, we're always transparent about all these projects, so we'll be more than happy to post that. And if there's any way to protect those trees, we'll be more than happy to uh, receive input. Okay. And I know that David wants a copy of that as well, which will be more than happy to, to post. So moving on, uh, Chris. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. So this is uh, Chris Rocky. I'm from 3229 Wasion Drive. And Robert, you mentioned, you know, getting back with the homeowners regarding, you know, landscaping, buffer, things like that. You know, I guess what's what's kind of the plan? Can you elaborate on that? And you know, what sections I guess are you considering in that plan? Um, we're going to look at what's existing. Um, if you just looked at, I think it was the the first slide or second slide that uh, Mike showed. Um, it just had a generic, um, you know, just a view. Uh, but we want to take a look at what's existing. You know, people have put uh, or planted uh, trees, whether it be cypress or anything else within that corridor that's going to be on the west side, closest to Lake Butler Boulevard. Uh, but we're willing to work with the residents on um, maybe having a a la carte menu and saying, hey, listen, what would you like to see in front of your homes um, when we get to that point as far as adding the landscaping, whether to block the view of Main Street, to block the view of anybody, uh, that's on the trail um, and to make sure that what you're looking at is uh, enhanced and it's not uh, a regression from what you're looking at right now. So are you speaking more specifically about the section that runs along um, South Lake Butler Boulevard only? Uh, it would be Older Main and South Lake Butler Boulevard. Yeah, we will have a, a landscape section of the plan sheets for the for the entire for the entire corridor now of course different areas will get different levels of, of treatment depending on what's there now how good of a screen is there how much shade is there but those landscape plans will be part of the final final set of construction plans we're just not at that point yet um, once we get through this meeting today um, and then make other make other changes based on the arborist report once we solve those issues then we'll get into the the landscape discussions uh, as Robert mentioned, with the with the the residents who live adjacent to those portions of the path, but the plans themselves are going to go for the whole the whole stretch of of the of the facility. And again, like that section that's immediately north of the canal, um, that's so wooded. I don't think we'll have a need to do much anything through there because we're still going to have plenty of landscaping on either side of that stretch. The other areas that are more exposed is is where we'll probably focus. Um, focus the, the landscape improvements. Yeah, and we'll be working with the property owners as well on where to put benches, so on and so forth. Again, our goal is not to um, take away from your quiet enjoyment of your property, but to enhance it. Um, there's a question, a direct message. This appears to be a future meeting, but can you define what is meant by golf carts shown in the manners? Um, the overall master plan, on trying to get the interconnectivity between all the HOAs and what we call town proper, which is the dirt road. Um, we're trying to, our ultimate goal is to connect the entire town via golf carts um, and or, um, you know, biking, pedestrian walkways, so on and so forth. So we're gonna be, this is just phase, I would say 1A, 1B would be to get it all the way to Sixth Avenue. Uh, phase two would be to extend it from Sixth Avenue to the Grove area. 
but what this plan does, it actually gives you the ability to go from the manors across to uh, Lake Bella Boulevard, or you can maybe look at in the future widening um, some of the um, pathways to get to Winter Elementary School to connect to this system. Um, but you'll be able to take a golf cart across the canal, um, which you can't right now, not legally on the road bridge, but you can on the new pedestrian bridge that we're constructing. What you do is you'll uh, merge from Lake Bella Boulevard, so Lake Bella Boulevard to the pedestrian bridge and then cross over it. And then you would merge back onto Old Germain, cross on fifth, go over to, I believe, was it Lake Street? And then you'd cross over uh, to our side and then be able to take a golf cart all the way to the Grove area. But yes, we're, trying to, we're trying to connect um, the parks, the commercial, the town square, civic area, um, all throughout town. I understand that. Here's my concern. Okay. Our street, which I live on Tryon, was actually intentionally closed, and I apologize for any echo that you're hearing. No problem. It was intentionally closed with a berm to prevent any type of motorized vehicle to go over there. So is that going to remain closed like what it's been designed to do? Yes. So Simple the answer. top parts won't be able to go through there? Uh, not unless they want to jump a huge berm. Mm. Okay. Okay. Thank All you. Right. No problem. And if you can mute, I'll mute you because uh, you are echoing. Um, all right. Again, we'll get to uh, Rick Haynes' question in a second. I have. I would like to have more discussions surrounding those of us along North Portion whose backyards back up to the trail. Are you talking about from um, South Lake Bella Boulevard all the way to Wintermere Elementary School? Right, Th that, yeah. that portion, right, yep. Yeah, I mean- And we don't have to discuss it necessarily now. You kind of said it's more of a future sort of mm -hmm. discussion with different homeowners, but I know those of us that back up there, you know, we sort of face a different issue, which is, you know, we're right on top of Main Street practically. Um, so when you're out in your backyard, you know, not only do we already kind of get all that current traffic, but we're adding potentially more that would already be staying on the roads that may just choose the golf cart now directly behind us. So things like that, and it may not even be your landscaping and maybe more along the lines of what's approved from a variance perspective from a, a barrier to the backyard, meaning fence heights, et cetera. Understood. Yeah. I mean, it's heavily vegetated right now. Uh, and I don't think we want to impact that. Um, but what's there right now, I think is a four foot wide sidewalk and you're looking at it, making it 10 foot wide. Mm -hmm. that, that'd be the only difference. Um, and again, it's going to be pedestrian uh, and not uh, golf cart accessible on that portion, because again, they're going to have to use South Lake Bullock Boulevard um, to traverse uh, back to the West. You're saying that that's not intended to be a golf cart portion? Not at this time. Sure. The only part of this trail that's intended to, to facilitate golf carts is on and off the bridge. So, and once you go south of the bridge, we're, we're getting people off the trail as soon as we can, as soon as we reach Old Main or Dirt Main. Um, that's where the ramp is. Now, once you go north of the bridge, we're not, we're not immediately getting people off of the, tra the trail because um, there, there's an existing open waterway there. So on the north side of the bridge, um, you've got a berm, but then on the west side, the same side that South Lake Butler is on, you've got some open water that flows towards the canal. So we didn't want to also bridge that to get immediately over to Lake Butler Boulevard. We wanted to travel a little bit farther north. It ends up being around 700 feet or so uh, to the point where um, the existing trees kind of end and it's cleared out. That's where we, then we right. wanted to initially get off right away. However, uh, based on the Arborist report, that's where the longleaf pine is. So we're going to look at this location and adjust it a little bit. I'm not sure exactly what the solution is going to be. It's going to, I mean, I think the best way to do it is going to be a site visit. 
Um, but we'll, we will relocate, well, most likely relocate the, the, the connection over to South Lake Butler. Um, but the only portion that's golf cart accessible is between those two ramps and over the bridge. Once you get north or south of that section, uh, the golf carts need to be on the, the existing street network that are uh, designated as golf cart friendly roads by the town. Gotcha. Okay. Thanks for clarifying. Absolutely. All right. Uh, Brandy or Rick? Haynes? Good guess. <laughs> Can you hear me all right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, yeah, I have just a couple questions, a couple comments. So one in terms of the trees, I know you guys are making the tree survey um, available and that they are, it looks like marked on the plan. Um, would it be possible though, for the ones that are gonna be removed to have them flagged? Because I do get a lot of residents telling me that, you know, they just have a hard time understanding the plans. Even at the meeting, we, the town council meeting, I had people questioning me where they're water meters were, what this meant, what that meant. People just mm -hmm. don't really know. So I think it would be beneficial to have it flagged so that the people who aren't good with reading the plans can understand it and it's pretty crystal clear. Um, so I don't know if that's possible. Um, and then, you know, the species, I'm assuming the tree survey has diameter at breast height and all of that as well. It does. Okay, so that would be my other question for that. And then, um, my third question would be kind of, um, <laughs> I don't actually, I don't have a golf cart yet, so I don't know what people are or aren't allowed to use, but I mean, I, I heard what you're saying that generally is to allow golf cart access. It's basically from one end of the town up to the other, correct? Yeah, that's, we have a, we did a study, I think it was in 2014, where we can utilize existing roadways and connections um, okay. for them to access that, you know, not people violate it all the time and that's not to say that people aren't going to you know get on a golf cart and try to use this section uh, but that's going to be uh, an enforcement issue okay. and the, the bollards are going to be pretty hard to get around i mean you'd have to you'd have to you're going to have people are on the golf carts are going to have to get off the path to avoid the bollards and then find a place where they can sort of off-road go up and over the berm and through whatever obstacles are, are there so not to yeah. say it's impossible but uh it, <laughs> at least at least we're going to filter them off of the of the network at the at the points near the bridge yeah think of the suburban section of the west orange trail between um winter garden and oakland mm -hmm. okay okay um my other thing would be then i know you guys are talking about that you're going to work you know with the residents that are there to you know work about putting back the landscaping but in terms of the trees that can't be avoided i mean if if those residents don't want you know trees there is there a plan to put trees back somewhere even if it's not all right there because that is a lot of trees and that's this is just the northern half right of the project i mean this has nothing to do with at the lower end where we are yeah the this is going to be you know because of that huge area that's just north of the canal it's uh, really congested with a bunch of trees. But again, when you look at the list of the 46, um, either most of them are either invasive, um, not healthy anyway, um, and or negatively impacted by Duke Energy. But we'll, we'll, we'll make sure that we yeah. can see what we can do as far as flagging the ones that um, we really want to, you know, identify, which is going to be the, maybe the live oaks or something that's not invasive. Um, but yeah, we'll be working with our arborist, landscape, landscape architect, and the tree board on replantings along the west side of this trail system. Uh, again, you want to do the right tree in the right place. You just don't want to do it haphazardly um, and something that won't take irrigation, um, but we'll make sure that we replant well. Okay. All right. That would be my main questions for now. Thank you. All right, thanks. And um, Tanya texted Diane to go ahead and make sure that we... Um, post the, the report ASAP. Okay, that's great, thanks. No problem, Brian. And, and again, you know, for the south portion of this project, our intent is to pretty much follow the existing sidewalk um, and utilize that as a base where we can. Uh, so I think the tree impacts are gonna be uh, lessened significantly. Okay, thank you. Yep. All right, um, do you have any more questions? Okay, Teresa, we'll get you that report. Um, 
Let's see if I see any other hands raised. I could joke about putting a pickleball court in the back of uh, Tom Harry Camp's um, property, but I'm not going to. All right. I'm Chris. sorry, R Robert, your audio was breaking up. You said you wanted to add a pickleball court. <laughs> yeah, next to Tom Haberkamp. All right, so we talked to Brandy. Uh, Lana, do you have any questions? My only question, I'm looking at the kind of the proposed plan online and I'm trying to understand so anyone that's coming down the proposed multi-use path from let's say Estancia or down yonder lane, for them to get to the Lake Butler area if they're on a golf cart, it seems to be, I don't see, are they then being encouraged to go down Windermere Road and cut through the manors? They're, they're not gonna be able to right now with the way that we have it configured. Um, we are working with the West Orange Healthcare Alliance to make that interconnectivity and to make a better pathway um, for people to get on um, uh, a multimodal pathway to this area. But our intent again is not to utilize the manors as a cut through on the north side on Windermere Road. They would go to Windermere Road, take a right, or sorry, take a left, and then jump onto across the street uh, of Windermere Road to uh, Maine, and then come down and then cross over to this section. Would they cross over by the school? Am I understanding? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, there's, there's really not much room to the north of the school on the west side of Main Street. Thank you. All right. Is that somebody's cat? No, that's my Rhodesian Ridgeback. Oh, okay. Sit down. All right. Any other questions? Okay. All right. Well, uh, we'll post this online. Uh, so if your friends, neighbors uh, have any questions, um, you can go ahead and direct them to this video and or uh, you all have our email addresses and contact information. Uh, we will be taking these 60% plans to town council in January for approval. Again, this is not your last spot at the Apple. We'll come back at 90%. Um, in addition to that, we'll be working with you um, who are directly impacted as far as the landscaping. And we'll be taking, again, plans to uh, tree board and um, um, you know, who else is you know, directly impacted or has a um, quality input. So again, thank you very much for attending. Uh, happy holidays, everybody. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thanks, Robert. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Bye everybody. Good night. Good night. Thank you. That was educational. <laughs> so I can't say that you uh, advocated <laughs> for a uh, pickleball court. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I, I heard that. And I'm like, please don't go there. Please don't go there. <laughs> no, no. Uh, I made sure I talked about it at the very beginning. Um, when I saw your text messages, I'm like, how did that get out? I'm like, what? Um, well, hey, the you, manners, there was a map. You're still recording. There was a map. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> there was